Well, time for another, uh, I guess you call it a rant from a uh, 60 year old redneck. Yeah, what the hell? Don't matter. Can't see with them, can't see without them. But tonight's rant's going to be how about this so called uh, Obamacare, great medical system, all oh, this HMOs, whatever you want to call them. You know, they're all out to look for, uh, out for us. Keep us healthy, they say. Right. If you buy into that, you might as well shoot yourself in the head. Sorry, long day, thirsty. Uh, seven years ago, my journey started. I took my wife to Kaiser Hospital, local, uh, for headaches that were making her pass out. They admitted her the first time for a few days, took a bunch of tests, gave her a bunch of drugs, told her she was fine, she'd go to work the following, uh, what was this, this was on a, oh, I think it was on a Saturday they released her, Friday night, Saturday they released her, they said she'd go back to work on Monday, no problem. Saturday she gets up, no problem, Sunday get us up, no problem, Monday we're getting ready to go to work. We're sitting here at the same table, having coffee, discussing our day. She goes to get up and passes out with a headache again. Straight back to the emergency room. Another $100. They had better for 10 days. They're running a whole bunch of tests, uh, brain scans, back scans, the whole nine yards, supposedly. They turn around and get her up on morphines, uh, Percocet, a whole bunch of drugs they got going in doing our IV. They release her, they tell her she can go back to work the following Monday, this was on a Wednesday, if I remember correctly, when they released her. Saturday morning, we're sitting here having coffee, fixing to start our day. And, uh, here we go again, passing out again. Get her back into the hospital, they keep her for 10 days this time. Now bear in mind, each time it's been for headaches. Uh, nothing to do with the back, the spine, the legs, any of that. No problem. Well, right before they released her 12, 13 days later, I forget, they decided they wanted to do a lumbar puncture. I've heard about those. I heard her say they valid test. They're checking to make sure she don't have MS or something like that, which could cause the headaches. Well, they did three in one day and didn't get anything. Struck me as a little peculiar, but I'm trusting the docs. You know, they got the piece of paper on the wall. They supposedly know what they're doing. They said they're going to be back the next day with a longer needle. Now, you have to bear in mind, during all this time, my wife was so doped up she couldn't put two words together in a sentence. I've got a video on my phone somewhere, on a house computer, that shows her taking a bite of her meal in her hospital bed. She goes to take the spoonful of food, stops halfway to her mouth, goes to sleep for 10 minutes. Spoon still held in the air with food. Her snoring. 10 minutes later, she opens up her eyes, continues to bite like nothing happened. If that's normal, I'm fucking insane. I know I'm a dumb redneck. I know I'm not the most illiterate person in the world, most eloquent, but that's fucked up. Well, after the last lumbar puncture, got done, my wife looked at the doctor and said these exact words, I felt a pop, my left foot is on fire. Well, the doctor at that time turned around and said, that's normal, that'll go away in about a week. 
I said, okay, no problem. They released her. She was now having trouble walking and standing. Well, Kaiser referred her to neurology because it has to be a nerve problem, they're thinking. We go to neurology for another year and a half and keep getting told she has this rare exotic disease. But at the same time, Kaiser is upping her morphine level. At one point, she was taking, what was it, a grand total of 65 or 75 milligrams of morphine a day, along with Percocets, Gabapentin, uh, Darvacet, Narco, a bunch of other high-level high uh, narcotics. You know, it got to be where a vibrant, lovely woman that I've been married to now for 34 years who was making $77,000 a year doing what she loves as an accountant couldn't even balance a checkbook. Couldn't remember what she had for breakfast that morning. You know, that's, that's pretty damn bad. And all Kaiser was doing was more meds, more meds, more meds. Um, we got her off of Kaiser, got her onto Social Security, Medi-Cal, the Humana plan, which I have no problems with. Got her to a new doctor. Oh, I forgot to say. Uh, for the last seven years, they'd also had her on nitroglycerin for chest pains. But Kaiser would not let her go see a cardiologist. Which makes no sense in my dumb estimation. Get her to a new doctor. And this doctor spends three hours on the first visit. Going through her Kaiser file. And her exact words is, Ma'am, I don't want to offend you, but you're a bloody mess. So we naturally told the doctor, I guess you don't want to have us as patients. She said, no, I'm going to take you, but you're going to go see this specialist, this specialist, and this specialist. Well, one of them was a cardiologist. And lo and behold, shortly after she saw the cardiologist, she was in having a triple heart bypass. Which scared the hell out of my wife. And she asked the cardiologist, what are my choices? And this is exactly what he said. Now, this was in November, mind you, two years ago. Uh, that would be uh, 2014, if I recall correctly, but it's 2016 right now. Um, he said, ma'am, you have two choices. You can have this triple bypass done and live for another 20 years, at least. Or you could not have it done and not see New Year's. I looked at my wife with all the love that I have in my crazy redneck heart for her. And I said, you have no choice. You're having it done. So within two weeks, she was in the hospital having it done. And thank God she came out of it okay. I could shoot the doctor for the stress he put me under, but... I guess that's the price of admission. It's supposed to be a four-hour surgery. It was seven and a half. But thank God I have my wife. Now, I have a lovely woman who I love very dearly. Who is constantly thinking she's let me down by getting sick. I don't have a problem with her being sick. What I have a problem with is all these fucking doctors, excuse my language for those that are offended, I really don't give a rat's ass, that seem to think that they're God. They can't talk to the patient, they talk at the patient. They don't listen to the patient, they lecture the patient. If you argue with them, they ignore you. All they want to do is push pills. We just had an incident 
the latest one. We've had three in the last six months to where my wife has ended up in the emergency room and almost died. This last one is because a doctor prescribed a medicine called Topamax to her. Now Topamax may be fine and dandy as a drug. It may do exactly what people think it's supposed to do. But for God's sakes, people, find out what drugs they're going to give you. Do your own research on your smartphone, your computer. Hell, make fucking phone calls. Because on my own, I found out after I ended up having to have my wife hauled away in an ambulance at 11.30 at night. Well, she's almost dead. That Topamax reacts badly with other medicines like gabapentin. Then we find out that she was on too much gabapentin, even though we were following the prescription we were given. Go figure. I'm a quiet individual usually. I don't usually voice my opinions. But if I had my way, the hospital that disabled my wife would be a pile of rubble right now. I know where every load bearing, bearing member is in that building, and I would take it down. But for one thing, I gave my word to my wife that I would not do anything. Now, right now, my wife, who I love dearly, is constantly dealing with this pain in her feet. Some days she's good and can walk around with her walker. But nine times out of ten, she's either in a wheelchair or in her bed. And I've been a person that's been very proud of the fact that I can take care of my family and not cause them pain or suffering. I am a typical old school man. I like to think so anyway. You hurt my family, I'm going to hurt you. I don't know how to stop my wife's pain. I give her all the comfort I can. But this rant is going on basically in the hopes that people, if they happen to read it, listen to it, whatever. For God's sakes, don't just blindly trust your diam doctors. They don't always know what they're talking about. Do your own research. Uh, I should have realized that when 26 years ago at work, I ended up in an industrial accident. I get headaches that shut down the left side of my head. I spent six months being tested by the same Kaiser and their neurologist came out with a diagnosis and damn near floored me with it. His diagnosis was, and I quote, your headaches are all in your head. No shit, doc. That's why they're called headaches. But I, I digress. If you are seeing a doctor or a dentist, or a, oh hell, a neurologist, foot doctor, whatever you want to call them, general practitioner, don't take everything they say as gospel, because they don't know everything, you know, hell, I just had a friend of mine whose doctor told, called her up on the phone 
and told her that she had lupus, hepatitis, muscul MS, panicked her out completely. She got a second opinion and more testing and found out she does not have lupus, she does not have MS, and she damn sure doesn't have hepatitis. So, we all need to quit giving the doctors the impression that they are God. You know, it, I know a lot of people ain't going to listen to this because it don't have sexy girls on it. It don't, it's not talking about Donald Trump. It's not talking about the bitch Hillary, any of that. But I'm talking about something we all need to realize, and that's called real fucking life. You know, if you ain't careful, all the things that you hold dear to your heart, and that keep you sane. If you're a veteran like me, you take every bit of pleasure out of what keeps you sane. Because it's very, very easy to go to the dark side. Um, you turn around and let these clowns have their way. And you're going to lose everything you ever worked for without even realizing it. Now, with all the shit going on with my wife being diabetic, these uh, problems with her legs and everything else. I thank God for Medi-Cal and Humana. If it wasn't, I'd be losing every paycheck just to pay for her meds. As it is, when she hits the donut hole, her insulin will cost about $1,100. Her morphines, her Percocets, her Gabapentins and all that will cost about another two, three thousand dollars for a month's supply. You know, I used to wonder how the elderly were making it with their illnesses and all that. I used to feel bad because I knew some that were eating cat food because that's all they could afford. Now I understand it. I ain't that bad, but I can understand it. The basic message of this YouTube video that I'm going to post on Google Plus, you all have my permission to share it if you feel like it, dump it if you feel like it. I don't really give a rat's ass. I'm voicing it basically to try to clear my head, to give me some peace of mind that I tried to warn people. Uh, don't trust the medical system. If it looks like a snake, acts like a snake, it's probably a fucking snake. Do your own research. Open a fucking book. Read a fucking sentence. Don't just text your friend saying, hey, did you hear about this? Do the actual fucking research. Open your fucking eyes. There's a world out there besides video games and Pokemon and naked women on a computer screen. Well, till my next rant, this is one old dumbass redneck wishing you all a good life, good day, and good night. Take care. Bye.